This video is the product of the Functional Cranial Release Research Institute. For difficult neurologic conditions that no one seems to have answers for, visit functionalcranialrelease.com. So, with Parkinson's disease, because the substantia nigra isn't working as well as it should, you're having issues with something called omnipause neurons. And what omnipause neurons do is they allow you to keep your eyes on a target. They basically inhibit something called a saccade. Okay? So when I did the saccadometer test on you, it's showing that those, those lines are like all over the place. Right? I mean, you weren't like when, you, when you, we did your son, you could see that those lines were like pretty much the same, going right and going left, where yours are all chaotic all over the place, okay? So you don't really know where your eyes are, in, in, in a sense. There, there's not that kinesthetic understanding, which we, which we call proprioception. So there, there's not a good sense of where your, old, your whole body is. It's, it's smeared. It's, so it's like if you have like um, what's called a somatotopic representation of your body and it's stored in your brain, it's, it's in the superior colliculus, okay? And they also call it collicular maps. So these maps are updated constantly through our eyes. So when your eyes are looking at different things, your body, other targets, the environment, your eyes are going to go to a, a specific target and, and they're going to stay there and the omnipause neurons inhibit saccades so that you can stay on a target for long enough to build these collicular maps. And they're being updated all the time. So what, what happens is that when we're not able to do that regularly, then it's like taking a picture and somebody's walking by and there's a real slow sh shutter speed and it smears. So that's what your representation of your body is, specifically even more so on the left side of your body. You know, and these are where you're having a lot of the, a lot of the problems is that left side of your body. But we're seeing it very severely in the eyes with that pattern. Okay? Right. So, so this is what we need to do is we need to get your eyes working so that you can go to targets very, um, um, specific targets, memorized targets, and accurate. And you can start locking in these memorized targets to start updating your collicular maps. Now the magic of what you're able to do this week because you're here in Sarasota and you're treating with me is that we're able to do other things that are going to further enhance this whole process. And it's, we're working on more than just the collicular maps with you, but some of the work that I'm doing, the PEMF, the glutathione and the endonasal balloon adjustments, they're very specifically allowing the brain to um, receive more improvement through, the, through its, its influence in the brain stem and the nerves. <clears throat> so I've found that they work, this, this works faster. Not to say that it won't, wouldn't be helpful for someone to do at home. But this is called eye pinball, okay? And we're going to have you basically um, having these two number sets, okay? And you're going to be looking, because it's, it's, it's the um, odd numbers on one side and the even numbers on the other side, okay? And you're going to be looking from side to side. And you're going to find at first, when you're going from one to two, and then you go from two to three, you should know exactly where three is because you've bet you've you've built a map uh, because you've already looked over there and so you know you're looking just south of one where your eyes were just at. So you see how you're going to start building a lot of really good kinesthetic awareness of where your eyes are. Well, this is going to go into your retinotopic map, which is going to update your somatic your entire somatotopic map. Ooh. How cool is that? So that when I look at other things. I'm doing it right. Focusing. That's right, because since you're always you're always updating your maps, you do this and you sync this in, you're as you just go through your regular activities throughout the day, 
your eyes are going to be more accurate, so you're going to be all updating your own collicular maps better moving forward. And it's also a lot less stress on the central nervous system because, as we know with Parkinson's, one of the big things is it's oxidative stress. You know, I mean, there's a lot of controversy with Parkinson's. I mean, people think that a lot of it's different heavy metals, different types of infections that can get in the central nervous system, like Lyme disease, you know, for one of them, viral infections. Um, there's a concern with um, pesticides that's been well established, different toxins and pesticides and chemicals that can cause it. Um, you know, and then the genetic, uh, it's my least favorite, you know, because it's kind of a trash can, you know, reason that people get any type of disease. It's, it's genetics, and it's been proven that genetics doesn't play that much of a role with a lot of diseases. It's our environment, different environmental influences. But back to this whole oxidation is that when there's more demand on the nerve cells, the nerve cells work harder, so they produce more energy and we have to buffer that energy with antioxidants. So we make energy, it creates oxidation, and if, we ha if we're having to overwork something and we don't have enough antioxidant to support it, then we get you know, damage to the nerves through too much oxidative stress. So one of the things that we like to do with our patients here with Parkinson's is we like to give them um, antioxidants such as glutathione. But at the same time, when we find things that are having to work, if something's not working very good, it's like a computer, you know, and it's not able to update something and it keeps trying and trying and trying, you know, you can just imagine that's probably not a good thing for the computer for its longevity, right? Those chips are going to wear out. What's the same thing with your brain? So this is one, of, one example of many that we may look at with a Parkinson's patient where we're, we're actually looking at, you know, updating and getting something to work so that when you're throughout your regular lifestyle it's actually going to be intact and working and, and providing you the benefit that it should versus spinning out of control not working and causing more oxidative stress to the brain. Makes sense. And this is the whole concept with functional neurology as well, you know, this new era with chiropractic neurology. So. Hi, this is Dr. John. Thanks for joining me. If you or a loved one suffers from difficult neurologic conditions that no one seems to have answers for, send them to functionalcranialrelease.com. You can contact me by phone or email me at askdrjl at gmail.com. And remember, if healing is possible, consider it to be within your reach. Bye for now. Functionalcranialrelease.com.